Hi there. Today I'm going to do a seminar on pike fly fishing and I'm going to do all the basics. Um, so if you haven't fished for pikes yet, then this is definitely a good way to start, a good, a good place to begin. And if you have fished for pike for quite some time, then probably there will be something in this that you can use as well. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about a lot of different things. I'm going to talk about the gear. I'm going to talk about the flies, I'm going to talk about uh, how to fish for pike, where the pike is and stuff like that. But first and foremost, I'm going to talk to you about pike because pike is truly awesome. And to illustrate this uh, and, and to illustrate how exactly, uh, how cool pike actually is and, uh, and, and why I love the pike fishing so much, here is a short video to do exactly that. All the pikes I remember the most are the ones I've caught on the, on the popper. To see a big, big pike attack one of these poppers is just awesome. Truly, truly amazing. The thing that comes, uh, that is closest to my heart is, is fishing with these poppers. It's just, it's just spectacular in every way. You see the pike come from maybe two, three meters uh, away with their fins just blazing through the water, just foaming it up and just grabbing your, your, big, your big bait and that is just awesome. about some of the pike fishing I've done and uh, and I must say pike truly truly has a special place in my heart because um, basically it's it's very nice to fish for pike because you catch big fish fairly easily and and you get a lot of action for, for your monies with uh, for, for your money with with a lot of the gear that you probably have already so if you have salmon gear if you have uh, uh, gear for for rough coastal conditions and stuff like that you can go fishing for pike all that the pike fly fishing requires is that you have a a fly rod um, a, a, and, and basically a fly rod that is a bit heavy. Uh, I would recommend an, an eight weight or, or, or you can even use a seven or a six weight um, but, but, but something that has a bit more potential because the essence of pike fly fishing is that you're casting relatively big uh, and volum uh, voluminous uh, flies. So, so the essence of pike fly fishing is uh, you catch big fish fairly easy uh, using fairly big flies and of course uh, the fact that you're using these fairly big flies is, is also the determining factor on the gear that, that, that you should use. Uh, my setup, which is, is this, uh, this is the rod I use the most. This is a, a Temple Folk Outfitters uh, uh, Asox rod, uh, a great, great rod that uh, is very light for, for, its, for its weight. It's a 9 weight, um, um, and that is uh, specifically designed for pike. You don't actually need this, but uh, I'm sure that, that uh, while, um, as, as you progress in this pike fly fishing, you're going to probably uh, fall in love with it as, as I have, and, and then you want to you wanna optimize your gear. But 
but to start off, what you basically need is is, is a rod that you use already for salmon fishing or, or whatever, uh, preferably in in uh, in uh, in size eight, as as I was talking about, because the more weight you have on the line, uh, uh, the easier it will be to pull these fairly fairly big flies through the air. So the basic physics here is is you have uh, you have a fly line and uh, and this line has a, has a certain weight. The 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 belly part of your fly line has a certain weight, and this has to drag a fairly large fly through the air. So the the more weight you have to actually drag that fly after it uh, in in the air uh, will give you an advantage and will make your your cast easier. I get a lot of questions about the, these big flies and and how am I a possible ever? Uh, how do I manage to cast these flies? There is one thing that is crucial and key to talk about here, and that is uh, when you fish for pike, you do not make thirty meters cast. You cast fairly sh uh, short distances. Um, uh, often the, the 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 belly part of the of the fly line is sufficient. So so you actually you 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 take the gear you have. And then, and then you simply adjust uh, adjust the flies so they will suit what gear you have. I have a friend of mine who's fishing for pipe with a class four, um, and basically what he does is is he takes some some flies that are not too heavy, uh, maybe uh, maybe even if. Uh, this is not a small fly, of course, but it's it's fairly in comparison. It's smaller than these other ones, and and he simply simply designs his flies to suit the gear that he's using. Um, so so when you're fishing for pike, what you want to do is is you you want to uh, you want to make sure that the flash you are casting, the flash you're using, is is in key in line with with the gear you're using as well. So if you have an eight weight, of course you're not going to tie these uh, monstrous, big, gigantic uh, uh, fly here with wriggle tails and all, all, all that uh, on them because uh, basically your, your, your gear is not, uh, is not up for that task. So you need to prioritize and you need to say um, what is it exactly I want to accomplish and then you're gonna t you, you need to tie flies that suit your purpose. So um, uh, uh, I think that is enough about talking about the, the rod and stuff like that. When, when you're looking at the rest of the gear, um, your reel here um, is is not that important. Uh, basically, uh, pikes are strong and, and ferocious, and and they can pull off some line, but they're not going to sprint, you know, 100 meters or something like that. They're going to probably even big pikes are going to take some some shorter bursts of, of tremendous power because pikes have tremendous power, but it's not going to be long runs into the horizon and stuff like that. So basically, you, you, the reel is not that big a deal. Uh, as long as you have something that that can hold your line and has some kind of break, then then you're fine. Uh, uh, so, so the rod is important. It's, it's important that you dimension the rod to, to the flies. The, the reel is unimportant, but the line has something to say. Um, I use the, the real pike lines, and, and the real pike lines are, are specifically designed to cast big, big, big flies into the wind. And that is important, and that is a good th way to go. So if you want to invest in something, and you have a class 8 rod, something like that, then, then a good pike line is definitely, definitely a good way to go. Um, because uh, because if you have a line with a relatively short belly that is designed to cast to drag these uh, fairly large flies into the wind, then then you're off to a better start than if you're using uh, uh, something not as suited. Of course, still if if you're tying uh, pure flesh flies and stuff like that, you can still uh, you can of course still fish for for a pike. But but if you have to to start some place, then a good pike line would be would be would be the best option to 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 start out with this. Um, in regards to to the leader, which is uh, is, is the, the natural next way to go, uh, it's it's fairly simple. I can make one for you now. Basically, I take some very very strong monofilament. This is. This is 0 0.65 or something like that. It has a breaking strength of, of 30 kilos, something like that. And basically, uh, the easiest way is simply to take one and a half meter or something like that, um, cut off that, and then make two perfection loops. So basically, I make two perfection loops like this. That's one. And then I do another in the other end, like so. And uh, and uh, I make one of these loops a bit bigger than uh, than the other one in order for me to have my flies uh, to come through this uh, this uh, uh, this loop here, like so. And basically, there you have your leader. 
Then of course, because you're fishing for pike, this is this is the easy part of the leader. Then of course, because you're fishing for pike, you uh, you need something that can uh, that can stand uh, stand up to 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 the uh, to the incredible amount of of big end and pointy teeth that a pike has. So you need something uh, you need something like a steel trace. I'm very fond of this. This is called not too kinky, and it's it's really really good for for pike flies in in general. And basically, what this is. Is, is a titanium trace which makes it very stiff and uh, and and this will last for for a lot of uh, for a lot of flies and uh, and if you're fishing let's say you're just starting out I would recommend that you use uh, hooked flies because um, uh, well these tubes are pretty cool and you can do a lot of stuff with tubes and they have some advantages but but if you're f if you're new to this and just starting up then simply simply tie flies like uh, like this and I'm gonna get into to to, to the flies later on but um, basically you take some titanium trace, like this here, and, and do, you do the exact same as, as I did before. You simply just take the trace here, uh, take out a, a piece of this, and uh, about, I would say, about 40 centimeters, or something like this, like that. And then I make exactly the same as I did with the monofilament. I simply, I simply just take and make two uh, perfection loops on this. If you're using uh, if you're using titanium like this, uh, it's important that you cut off uh, you cut off this here, but not too far down. So so you need to have a bit that's sticking out because otherwise this can this loop can actually open. And in the other end, I attach. Uh, 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 what would you call this in English? This is basically kind of like a swivel, but without the the thing that that spins around. And uh, and when I make my perfection loop, I make one loop first. Like so, then I take uh, my 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 uh, my snap here, and uh, and and I attach it to the line. Then I make my second loop, pull this one over, and uh, and simply uh, make the perfection loop. And this makes me now have the the uh, uh, the uh, the snap in in on on the leader, and basically I'm ready to go. I can uh, attach this to to my leader uh, using the two loops, and uh, and of course uh, simply add the fly, and I'm good to go. So that's that's the basic setup. Simply a good fly line, a decent rod, a reel of you know is not very important, and and then then some leaders, and you're ready to go. Of course, there's a lot more to this, and you can optimize in a lot of different ways. But basically, that's it for the gear. So, um, good. Hi there. Um, today we're on the water, and uh, which, well, that's something I, I of course love. Um, and I've caught uh, quite a few pikes so far this this day. But uh, what I want to talk to you about right now is uh, is my new pike rod. I have the Sage Pike, which is a great, great uh, rod, and I'm very, very pleased with that. But uh, but I've had uh, for, for the past couple of months, uh, months I've, I've taken the time to, to test this tip which really really is is an enormous uh, you get enormous value for your money it's a it's a it's a relatively cheap rod compared to, to the switch pack at least um, and uh, and it really really has a tremendous amount of, of power and a tremendous amount of uh, of uh, of uh, what do you say you could say cest I think um, this really really is a rod that that is built uh, for for casting large flies in windy conditions and it does the job excellent I'm really pleased with mine the the, the handle here is is a bit f uh, strange to look at um, but it really really gives you a firm and and completely a solid grip uh, while casting into uh, big flies into into windy conditions and the class of this uh, Temple Folk Outfitters folk, <laughs> Temple Folk Outfitters Esox is, uh, is, 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 is classified as 300 to 400 grains which is um, uh, an American 
American way of, of expressing stuff. Uh, so, uh, so which means uh, basically that this casts, I would say, ideally with 24 grams or uh, WF uh, Rio uh, Rio 9, uh, a great line. Also, this is also the line I have for this. So overall, I'm very pleased with the rod, with with this rod. It performs excellent, and uh, at the at the very very uh, at, the, at the good price, this is definitely uh, uh, com uh, competing with uh, with a lot of other. Uh, different uh, uh, pack rods out there uh, and, uh, and on price alone this is uh, this is uh, very affordable so well uh, the temper fog outfitters ESOX a great great rod at a very good price well um, that was about it I'm gonna catch some more pikes now Det er så fedt ud af den to. Bliver ved med at tro, de er større end de er. Siru? Ai. Now that we have discussed the, the gear, I'm going to go a bit more into to the flies because the flies, as I said earlier, is very, very crucial. It's a key element to, to, uh, to, to fishing for pikes. There is a lot of different flies out there and I have numerous amounts of, of different flies on, uh, on my YouTube channel here. So, so if you're looking for something insp for, for inspiration, simply just browse around on, on my YouTube channel here. And if you have not already subscribed, then please, please, I would like you to do so. When you're when you're, you're talking about pike flies, there is a lot of different styles and a lot of different patterns and a lot of different stuff. But um, basically, I'm going to divide this into three different categories. Um, I'm going to divide it into two, two streamers tied on hooks. Then I'm going to talk about uh, the tubes something like this. And then of course you have your poppers. And your poppers you can do on either tube or on hook. Um, first off is, is the simple and uh, the simplistic and easy way to get started on this. And that is simply to tie on hooks. Um, there is a lot of different uh, hooks and stuff out there. And, and the most important thing is that you basically you have a hook that is fairly big because uh, you're gonna tie a big fly on this and, uh, and these, these flies on, on big hooks will be easy for you to, to, to find inside the pouch pike's mouth, and also they will hook better, um, and, uh, and they will be easy to remove with your pliers. So, uh, so whilst that being said, uh, there is not that much to a pike fly. You can actually do a lot of different designs. Um, uh, while whilst these uh, these pictures are are going on, um, I would like to to talk to you about the the different ones. You have the basic simple one, which is something like this. Uh, this is made from, uh, from from three materials. There is a bit of flesh in here. Uh, there are some eyes to to make it bounce and jig, and then there is some 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 th synthetic fibers and some bucktail. So basically, this is a fairly simple, very easy to tie, and and very inexpensive fly to make as well, and and a good bet if if you want to start out. Um, uh, a fly like this works fairly well. It's it's fairly durable, and uh, and, and and this will catch you some pikes. And uh, and uh, the last thing that's important about this is it's not too big, so it's easy for you to cast. 
when you talk about pie flies, uh, uh, the, the key element is the materials you use. Because um, uh, if you're tying uh, pike flies and you add a lot of, let's say, bunny and, and uh, rabbit skins and stuff like that, uh, that and, and natural materials uh, in general, then you will have some very bulky flies that looks absolutely astounding in the water, but they will be very, very heavy to cast. So what you want to do is you want to design flies that has a, a, as big a profile as possible, but with as low weight as possible. And one of the ways to do that is simply to use artificial materials, Steve Farrow blend, big, five, big fly fiber blends, and then of course flash, because flash absorbs absolutely zero, zero um, water, um, which makes them very, very easy to cast. And they will drop this water as soon as you take your, your, first, uh, your first blind cast, then all the water will have drained from, from these flies, and they will, they, will, they, will, uh, they will look like a lot in the water, but they will be fairly easy to, to cast. So use flash, use, use artificial materials, and, uh, and, uh, and that, is, that is the key element to this. Um, uh, so that's basically it regarding the, the hooked flies. Uh, something like this is also very, very good and, and, and quite big. Um, regarding colors, I say that black and white uh, are my two go-to colors, but also pink is a great color, especially in waters where you haven't fished, uh, where, where, where the, the, the fish haven't seen many flies, then pink and, and chartreuse and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, yellow and stuff like that can be very, very effective. But, but if you're fishing in, in lakes where, where, where there is a lot of other fishermen, then the, the natural colors are, are your way to go. And also in, in, in bright conditions, in bright weather and stuff like that, the, uh, the, the natural colors is best. If you're fishing in murky water, then, then of course, the the, the more bright colors will, will be will be a good bet pink and chartreuse and orange and stuff like that so so start off fishing um, with with flies that are castable design flies that are castable and uh, and be careful not to use too much material when you tie these I know that uh, that, that maybe sound a bit uh, <laughs> strange because I sell fly tying and <laughs> of course I want to sell some fly tying but I, uh, first of all I want you to have um, flies that work and uh, so, so so use 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 uh, the materials in in scarce amounts do not use too much material because too much material will make too bulky flies and too bulky a fly will be impossible to cast. And, and if you can't cast the flies, then you're probably going to give up before you even get started. So, so, so take care while, while, while using the materials not to use too much. Also, too much material will make your fly look too bulky in the water and not at all like, like, like a living thing that Pike would actually go for. So, that's it for the hooked flies, I think. Um, regarding the tubes, there is an insane amount of different stuff you can do there, and uh, and the, the tube flies has uh, some major advantages. Uh, the tube flies has the advantages that you can you can actually do a lot about how you set up the hook for for a tube fly. This is a, a basically a tube fly rig, and and what I have here is I've added a rattle, and and I can choose what size flies I want. I can add a I can add a, a tailor hook if if I want that, and also I can add wriggle tails. And wriggle tails is truly truly awesome. They um, they really really give a lot of a, li a lot of life to to the fly, and uh, and uh, and. If you're tying uh, rigging like this, and I have another video that shows exactly how you do this, uh, then you can you can easily take off uh, the, uh, the the wriggle tail so you have a fly that fishes with or without the wriggle tail. Also, when you're 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 using tubes, if your hook for some reason uh, is not working anymore, you can simply repre replace the uh, the rig and and you still have a working fly. So so that's the advantages for 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 tubes. You have some uh, you have a lot of options here, and you can you can change a lot about how the fly moves in the water by changing the rig. You can add the rattle if you want. You can leave it out. You can put the the wriggle tails and stuff on there. But what's important about these tubes is if you want the, to use the tubes. Um, um, it's important that you have a setup and you have a, a big end and, uh, and, uh, and uh, a tube with, with a large diameter inside a, a large hole in it. So, so I, use, I would recommend the, the, the big predator uh, tubes from, from Futurefly because uh, you, can easily, you can easily take out your leader and, and swap the fly and simply place it back on so you don't have to tie a new knot every single time you want to swap because that's the major disadvantages uh, and the only disadvantages disadvantage to, to the tube flies is it's a, it takes a bit more time to, to swap fly than it does with, uh, with, this, uh, with this snap because basically you can, you can snap on any fly you want if you're fishing with hooks. 
So there is a lot of uh, a lot of uh, advantages to 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 the tube flies, um, and if you do if you tie them correctly and and uh, and and have. Uh, uh, and, and tie the rigs correctly, then then you will get none of the you you will you will find that it's fairly easy to to change the flies as well. Another thing that you can do to add life to your flies and to make it easier is this. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a leader, and on the leader I've added several beads of tungsten. So so if you're fishing and and you can see how oh, I, I want to fish a bit deeper and stuff like that, basically uh, simply just add some uh, add some beads or some cone heads. Uh, I think these tungsten beads are great because they're not that big. Uh, Bao um, uh, makes some some nice heavy uh, nice heavy cone heads as well. And and you simply just, you know, put them on the leader and they will they will drag your fly down. And that is that is a major major advantage. So I always carry uh, a bundle of of tungsten uh, Tungsten heads uh, or cone heads in uh, in my in my fly box simply so I can swap easy and and this that also make the fly jig a lot and uh, and uh, and that is that is an advantage as, as well. So basically, I think that's it for now. Just about the flies, um, and um, and I think we should swap to talk a little about. Um, about pike, uh, pike in general, uh, and uh, and in order to get you in the right mood, I'm just going to show you some clips here of of, uh, of pikes feeding and pikes going crazy. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna very slowly, just and very carefully lift this up so you you can see this monster. You see? <laughs> I probably should have done this part out on the water where I could have showed you stuff like that. But but what you want to do with pike is is you if in order to catch pike you need to understand them. And pike is is a vicious and uh, and and I always say violent creature that uh, that uh, that thrives on uh, on uh, on ambushing stuff. So so basically what you want to do when you're fishing for pike is you want to find and fish spots where the pike can hide. And even in shallow water, you can find very, very big pikes. Hide and then ambush its prey, uh, because it's built for speed. You see the the tail with with the two fins there at the back. It's simply built for you know it's built for ambush. So basically, what you want to do when when you're fishing for pike and when when you're searching for pike in, in a lake or in in a stream or or whatever, uh, you, you want to find places where you think the pike could lurk, and then attack uh, unseen. So, so anywhere there is vegetation, anywhere there is a drop off where the pike can actually be on on the on the on 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 the on, on the reefs and on, on the banks and and can attack from 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 from, from an advantage advantageous point of of not being seen by its by its its prey is where the pike will be. And, and you can find pike in any depths of water. Of course, you will find in some lakes that the pike will, will cruise the, 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 the deeper waters of a very, very deep lake. But, but normally, uh, when I fish for pike, I fish the, fish the shallow parts of, 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 of the waters. Also, because in the shallow parts, you have a great, great uh, chance of getting su success with the poppers, which is absolutely astounding. So you want to you want to target pike while targeting places where the pike could hide efficiently from its prey and then could 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 accelerate and jump on them. So fish fish the 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 water lilies fish fish uh, all the all the places where where it's possible for a pike to hide and then attack and that means the seaweeds that means the water lilies that means uh, any any kind of difference where 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 if you have the lakes or, or the river where where, where it, it goes from one one thing to another that is where the pikes will be um, so so basically search out places where you think here is a good place for for fish to hide, uh, for an ambush uh, to to attack the roach or the brim or or whatever it is, and uh, and uh, and it, it can be it can be very very local. A lot of a lot of uh, the times when I fish for pike, I sometimes fish for for hours without any 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 without a feeling anything, and then all of a sudden in a, in a relatively small area, oh, there just seems to be bonanza, and there seems to be pike in every single cast. So 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 do a lot of different things while you're up there, and that's something that applies to. All fishing. Um, try not to try not to do exactly the same thing until you find something that works. So so um, so vary your way of stripping. Vary where you're fishing. Vary the depth the depths of where you're fishing stuff like that until until you find exactly what works on that day. Because uh, it can be it can be completely different even from hour to hour, from day to day. And and that's one of the things that really really amazes me about pike is a uh, pike is just so awesome because you never know. You you can you can you can make a lot of rules and you can make a lot of, of general generalis generalizations but 
but it can change in an hour. And and also it seems that Pike has. Uh, uh, in, in any given day, uh, some periods where they're not active and then some periods where they're periods of the day where they're simply just hammering and anything. And that can vary a lot from day to day as well. So basically, try to do as much different as you can as possible until you, you, un, until you, you, you crack the code of the day and then, uh, and, and then do more of that. I can say something that is is quite general, and that is, of course, fishing the uh, fishing the, uh, the 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 best places, the places where they can hide, but also how you how you strip. So um, I'm just going to give you a demonstration here. So let's say I've cast my fly line out, and I'm fishing for pike. One of the things that is important is, and and one of the things that that I do in general is, I fish either slow, very slow, or insanely slow, uh, because pike seems to like not having to you know, hunt their prey over a vast distance. It's not like sea trout uh, or, or salmon in, in summer rivers where, where the speed is, is the key element, or salt water for that matter, where, where you need to fish a lot of, a, a lot of, a lot of, have a lot of speed in order for, 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 for them to, to, to strike. Because pike is, is normally used to, to simply to ambush stuff, so, so they will often uh, follow your flies for quite a long time, and then, and then uh, what, can, uh, what can trigger the, the, the fish grabbing your fly is, is often just to you know let your fly hang, and and if you have a fly that is relatively uh, r relatively uh, relatively light, it can it can hover in the water, and that hovering in the water simply is something that that the pike seems to to enjoy a lot. So normally I fish something like this, fairly fairly slow, and then I vary it a bit, maybe fish it a bit faster, but smaller strips, and then maybe even fairly long, and uh, and when I do this fairly long one, at the end of this I simply just give it a bit more of a tug, uh, because often this makes your fly swim very, very straight, but then if you, if you give it that small, uh, small uh, acceleration at the end, it will make your fly uh, move out to the, to the side. And, and if, you fo if, 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 if you think of a pike, um, that is following your fly and and see the fly from behind. It's it's a very small fly, but 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 when it it makes this turn outside, uh, then it, the profile of the fly simply is just in the face of the pike, and and all of a sudden it becomes very big and the flesh is sparkling and stuff like that, and that really really works a lot. But make a lot of of pauses and and a lot of the times when I fish for pike, I I catch uh, catch quite a lot of fish, you know, just after the cast. Uh, while I'm getting uh, maybe uh, something is tangled because that happens to me as well. That happens to everyone. Um, and and basically, as soon as I pick up the line, the pike is on there. And and they have simply grabbed it while it's sinking slowly, slowly through the water. And they've grabbed it uh, there. So 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 fish slow as a key element. Sometimes it's a bit more speed. It can be good, but but in general, fish slow uh, because that will get you the most fish, especially if the waters are cold and stuff like that. So, so basically, just the average slow retrieve with, with a bit of variation um, in order to, to get pike that is, probably, that is following your fly to, uh, to, to stop following and grabbing it in, instead. That is, uh, that is a, good, uh, a good way to go. Um, um, so, so thinking about all these things is something that will help you uh, a lot while uh, fishing for pike. Um, and, and of course, of course, uh, go out and try to find some water as well. Uh, I've had a lot of success in in waters uh, where where n not many people fish simply by you know going down to to uh, looking on on a map and seeing what what farms are near here from this small lake and then simply you know knocking on doors and and asking people if if uh, if I were allowed to fish in their lake and 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 a good thing to if if you do something like that is is to simply bring bring along a, a case of beer or or a bottle of, of whiskey or something. Something like that. So, so you have something to bargain with. Say, could I go fishing here for a couple of days or, or, or a few times a year, and and I will hand you this uh, this gift free of charge. That 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 can open a lot of doors, and and you can find some pretty pretty awesome uh, pike fly fishing uh, 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 like that. At least in Denmark, that works. I don't know uh, out there uh, <laughs> otherwise. But um, but design your flies so they work. Fish them slow, um, and uh, and you do not need to go out and buy expensive gear. Not yet, at least. But but when when you fall in love with this, you probably will. So that was um, in general uh, a small tutorial, a small a small uh, a small uh, yeah some some rantings about uh, about how I fish for pike and uh, and uh, and what gives me the best success uh, successes with uh, with pike fly fishing. I hope you enjoyed that. See you on the water, hopefully. <laughs>